David Nelson, Chief Strategist for Bellpoint Asset Management, joins me on the line now. David, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. David, I'm happy you're able to speak with us today. I know you were doing your media rounds with Fox News and CNBC, and I'd really like to get your thoughts today on the U.S. economic recovery. Do you think we'll see a recovery in 2014? And what could this mean for safe haven assets like gold? I do think we're going to see a U.S. recovery, and we even saw some evidence of that uh, in today's ADP numbers. They were outstanding, and there really wasn't a lot of uh, you know bad news for the doom and gloom guys out there. I've actually already come out... Uh, and made my call for 2014. My base case scenario right now is that we're up about 7%, and that would track earnings growth. But I can make an argument for a much higher market based on the following factors. I think we could see some modest multiple expansion, even from here, and trade it 18 times consensus numbers next year. And that would put us at about 2,100 uh, in the S&P by the end of the year. And I realize that's a bullish call, but I'm basing it on the following. I think the United States is well on its way uh, toward energy independence sometime in the next decade. And that has enormous ramifications for what stocks will do and the multiple that people will pay for stocks. As for safe haven assets in, ter in terms of gold and others, I, I suspect that gold will probably not decline from here, but probably be flat with the fear that the Fed is, is going to taper. And, and I'm pretty certain that that's going to happen sometime next year. David, also in a recent article you wrote, you said how the elephant in the room these days is the bond market. Can you explain? Sure. I, I do, do believe that. I, I think it's almost a certainty, and, and obviously nothing is certain in this environment. But uh, I think it's almost a certainty that interest rates are going to start to climb. And that has, uh, it's going to affect certain asset classes. I think it's going to be a weight on the housing market uh, because it's certainly going to affect affect more good rates. It is also a weight on the stock market to a certain degree. It's going to affect the margin interest. Uh, not going to be able to lever up. A lot of funds will actually have to start to lever down. But for those that are hiding in vehicles like preferreds or, or long dated bonds, they can see significant declines next year. David, we also saw in the news Wednesday that U.S. budget negotiators are in a near deal with Democrats uh, that would accept fresh revenue from user fees and Republicans that would agree to more federal spending. Do you think we'll be able to avoid a government shutdown? I, I think, yeah, I think we'll avoid it. But I, I also think, think that we're going to go through a you know, Hollywood last minute scenario, as we seem to do every year. And we keep postponing things. Uh, it is, uh, it's a, it's another, we have two elephants in the room, don't we? And that's certainly another one. And the negotiations are ongoing, uh, but I, I'd be hard pressed to think that we'll have any kind of deal until we get very close to the deadline. Although I think... The backdrop has changed somewhat. The, the, at least the rough start for Obamacare kind of takes the legs out from the Democrats. So the, the Republicans and the Democrats are going to be a little bit on equal footing here as we go into these negotiations. That wasn't true the last time. And David, going back to markets now, what do you make of the rush into equities? Uh, look, you know, I, I can certainly make a case that it's overbought. And if you think you can trade out of this market and buy at 5% lower, then that's great. By all means, you should do that. I haven't found a half a dozen people on the planet that get that right on a consistent on a consistent basis. I'm bullish for, for, for most of next year. Until I see evidence otherwise, something that makes me change that backdrop, I'm going to probably stay fully invested. Finally, David, I've been asking my guests for the 2014 outlook we're putting together that if I were to give you $10,000, how would you invest that today? Uh, look, it, uh, it depends. Obviously, it depends on age. You know, if, if you're approaching retirement, no matter how bullish I am on the stock market, you cannot put all of your money in, uh, in stocks. You'd have to have a division. I would lean towards stocks. You know, the old, the old uh, maybe retirement 50-50 rule, that, that's no longer uh, sanguine, I don't think. I would certainly put at least 60% of your assets in stocks, uh, probably uh, maybe 25% of your assets in, uh, in, in, in bonds. And the rest in hard assets, and that, that would be division up amongst a number of things. And hard assets could include things like real estate. It could include precious metals, although I'm not really a bull on precious metals uh, at, this, at this juncture. Maybe that money should just stay in cash for that. And if you had to avoid one thing? And it, long dated bonds for sure. Just avoid that. You know, if you've got to go into the bond market and you need some income, use some alternative things like uh, master limited partnerships that uh, apply to the energy space, that's a great way to go. And if you have to be in bonds, then make them short data bonds. On that note, thanks so much for joining us today, David. Thank you, Daniela. Thanks so much for having me. 
And thanks for watching this edition of Kiko News. You can email us at newsfeedback at or follow me on Twitter at Daniela Kamboni. Thanks for watching.